Hi guys, welcome back to the second episode. Now, if you weren't already doing, please make sure you're following along with every video. Pause if you need to catch up with me at any point, but please make sure you're following along with the tutorial in Roblox Studio yourself to get the most out of this video. So let's get into it. Insert a script as always. And of course, in here, we've got this print hello world uh, dummy code or template code. Uh, as we saw in the last video, this is what you always have whenever you create a script. Now, this hello world text is written in uh, quotation, double quotation marks. And this is what we call a string value. Uh, and we can add a comment. This is a comment, by the way, with a double dash. And that is a string, string value. Now, there are other types of values that we can use as well. We can say print, we'll just give a number. And that's obviously a number value. And of course, we run both of them and get hello world 10, just as you'd expect. Now, in the previous video, we talked about accessing properties of various parts. But now I want to talk about how we can store data using something called variables. So I can type out a variable here and I can simply call it my variable. And that's the name of the variable. And then I say equals and I can say equals hello there. Thanks for watching. And that would be a string value. Again, this is a comment I'm adding in. Uh, it's green text, you can see, and uh, you just add that by using the double dash. And then anything you write in there won't be run by the program. Comments are often used. Uh, you could write it at the top of your script. You could say, this script was made by gnome code or your name in that case <laughs> okay so we've got my variable what can we do with that well we can either add another print command down below and we can say print my variable and of course my variable equals hello there thanks for watching so if we run that you can see down below in the output it says Hello there, thanks for watching. And if I, I'll zoom in a bit, you can see that a little bit better hopefully then. So there you go, there's using a variable in our code. We'll delete these two. And we're gonna add in another variable. This time we call it my number. And this time we use a number data type and we'll say my number equals 42. And then we can print out my number. Run that again and there you see is 42. And there's also something else we could store in a variable and we'll call this uh, my property and this time we'll set this to equal game dot workspace dot base plate dot transparency so we're going to access the property of base plate like we did before and go to the transparency and that value equals zero. We can then print that out by saving it to this variable here called my property. And of course my property is equal to zero. So if we run that, we can see we've got zero printed down to the output here. Now, why would we want to use variables? Now, if we're using a, a simple script or a long script, but a simple script like we were in the last video, where we're constantly changing the value of the base plate's reflectance or transparency or whatever, and we kept having to change it, and it made it quite a lot of information when really all we're wanting to change is this very last line here but we had to add in all of this, and that was a lot of repetition. What if we could simply say base equals game.workspace.baseplate? 
and then if we want to change its properties down below we can simply say base dot transparency equals 0 0.5 and base dot reflectance equals uh, 0 0.5 again and we don't need to print anymore and if we run that you can see it's changed the properties of the base plate and this is very handy because it's a lot easier to read now and it's a lot faster to type hopefully you can see a good example of using variables there but you probably get a better idea of how we'd use them in some later videos but that's about it for now thanks guys Thank <laughs> you.